Hi and welcome to part 8 of my LSX tutorial series. In this tutorial I am going to show you how to create this effect. Uh, I think this effect is a good summary of everything we have seen so far. And so it's good to give an example of everything you have learned in a practical application. So to start with this effect, I want to have a square, just a simple square, but unfortunately I'm too lazy to go to quick pick edit. To avoid this, I'm going to place a ping event. It's hidden under the more button. This one, ping. This event creates squares that move around on the screen. They are placed in frame 10 to 15. So it's just a nice little event. You can change the velocity at which the squares move around, like very fast or very slow. You can have more of them. Like this. And if you go to the frame picker, you see that these five, five slots are filled in with squares. So, just a little shortcut. Okay, just to show you the ping event. By the way, uh, you can also replace these squares with uh, frames, with other frames from your catalog. And then they will start to bounce around instead of these squares. These squares are just placeholders if the frames are empty. So, that's good to know. But anyway, um, the effect I show you works with a loop event. So place a loop event with an animation in it with a square. Okay. I'm going to um, move it downwards with a fixed amount. to the bottom of the screen. Um, I probably want to scale it down as well. Like this. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to add a shift X event. And I'm going to give in an expression. But before I do that, I have to draw your attention toward this box here. The duplicate count controls loop variable. This loop variable is a very special variable. I can give in a number here, like 10. This will uh, duplicate the, the current animation 10 times. So instead of one square, the square is drawn 10 times in a row, so it's harder for the scanners to do. Um, and also with each loop, or with each iteration, this loop variable increments with a value equal to 1 divided by 10, so with 1 tenth. And that's very useful in expressions, and this is also why this loop event is called loop, because it loops this variable. So I'm just going to give a loop like this, and I get 10 squares in a row. Very nice. What I'm going to do now is to change their size between 1 and 0 with another special expression. The expression I need is documented here, it is the spec2 expression. So remember it uh, It works in the same way as wave2 and a is uh, the position, uh, the, the, uh, if it is 0 it is the left channel, 1 is the right channel and 1 half is the middle channel and b is the frequency of the, of the, of the sound that is being played. 
and I want to apply the frequency or the spectrum of a specific frequency to one of these squares. So I do this by typing in spec2 of the center of the output and loop. And now the effect should already work. You can see I have here output, but um, it's very weak. So I have to multiply it by a large number. Okay, you can see an effect if I speak harder, but I, I'm going to need a larger number. Okay, you can see the effect is already happening. And oh, it's a bit annoying. It's upside down. So I'm going to have to adjust that. Just, yeah, okay. Easy fix. So you can see, well, maybe I need to use an even, uh, do something crazy. Okay. I think that's nice. Okay. Yeah. So you can see if I speak, the effect now works. So very easy effects, very simple, very powerful. You can also change the amount of uh, blocks you have like this. But then you might want to reduce the size a little bit more, like this. You could even do a color modulation effect, but I'm not going to waste my time with that because I only have one color. Okay, so I think this is a very neat result. Just in five minutes, I created this effect. Very powerful, very nice effect. Very spectacular and it works perfectly in real time with real music from the microphone. So you can set it up at a gig and let it play and it's it's a good ad addition for your live show. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.